Welcome back to Michigan Wolverines, 17-12 uh, on the year. They finished 10-6 and six in the Big Ten. They finished third overall, and that was the second most conference wins in program history. Here's who the Michigan Wolverines will roll out tonight. Starting at the point, it'll be 5'7", junior Courtney Boylan. She's out of Chaska, Minnesota. Veronica Hicks gets the start. The senior 5'9", out of Chicago, Illinois, 11 points, 5.5 rebounds per game. She's their leading scorer and rebounder, and she's third team all Big Ten. Jenny Ryan, the third guard, the sophomore out of Saginaw Nouvelle Catholic Central. Seven points, five rebounds a game for Jenny Ryan. At one of the forwards, Rachel Sheffer. Rachel Sheffer, a sophomore forward out of Waterbury at Michigan, putting up 10 and a half points a game and nearly four rebounds a contest. And the center, the junior, six foot out of Hilliard, Ohio, and Davidson High School is Carmen Reynolds, 10 points, four and a half rebounds per game. And the Michigan Wolverines are coached by Kevin Borseth in his fourth season. He's 67 and 60 at Michigan. He's a native of Bessemer, Michigan in the Upper Peninsula. His last stops include University of Wisconsin Green Bay where he was nine seasons there and Michigan Tech where he was with the Huskies for 10 years. He's assisted by Dawn Plitzewite and Tiana Kirkland. Mike Williams, director of ops is Raina Harmon and Tiana Kirkland, by the way, Spent the 06-07 season right here in Ypsilanti as an assistant under current Michigan State head coach Susie Merchant. For your Eastern Michigan Eagles, it is Cassie Schrock to start at the point. The senior out of Wadsworth, Ohio. 14 and a half points a game, seven rebounds a contest. Top 10 in the conference in both categories. Tavlin James, the junior out of Detroit Mumford, gets the start at the shooting guard. 17 and a half points a game. She leads this team. And Sydney Huntley. At the third guard, the senior out of Cincinnati, 11 points per contest. Kristen Thomas, the senior from Winter Park, Florida, six-footer, two and a half points a game, 6.7 rebounds per contest. And Paige Reddit in the middle, 6'1 junior out of Kansas City, Missouri, 9.6 rebounds a game. And, of course, the head coach, Amory Gilbert, in her fourth season since coming over from Michigan State University as an assistant. She is assisted by Yvette Harris, Former University of Michigan Latanya Tate is the associate head coach. And Callie Crawford is the director of basketball operations. Megan Snow is the trainer. Now then, want to introduce our crew here tonight. Greg Steiner on color commentary. And uh, Brian Nemirovsky. Hey, guys. Good to see you again, buddy. You Why are not? in the catbird seat. You're the executive producer tonight in the absence of our good friend Jeff Fulton, who is not here. We wish Jeff, wish Jeff well. And... Uh, we will get to that later, but he is not going to be with us tonight out of the weather. And uh, certainly thoughts and prayers with Foley. He is resting at home. The game is underway right to left. Eastern Michigan and the home whites. Green Eastern Michigan across the chest outline in black. Schrock has the rock left side. Wants to dribble drive left elbow jumper. No. Left block jumper. No. And that rims off to Michigan. Wolverines on the run. Courtney Boylan now top side. It'll go to Sheffer. Sheffer cut off to the right elbow. We'll kick it back out to Reynolds. It's a big Michigan team. They go six foot six one out there, but their depth, they go six four across the board on the pine. They're gonna go down low and they're gonna get to the big girl, Carmen Reynolds, and she walks on the right block. So Michigan right away turns it over. No score, 1920 to go in the first. One thing you're gonna have to watch out for, Michigan turns the basketball over a lot fewer than Eastern Michigan by almost 200 on the season. Sure do. Tavlin wants to dribble, wants to get to the rack. Lost it. Picked up by Hicks. Hicks quickly up. Two on one back the other way. Ryan uh, up and under. Nice move. Missed it all. Offensive rebound. Hicks stick back. No. So a couple of misses on that trip. Read it with the board. Eastern wants to run, of course. Schrock, top side. Left wing. Huntley for three. No. Front iron miss. Schrock, the offensive board. Stick back. No. And so early on, it's a bit ugly. It is 0 for 5 combined from the floor. No score yet, Eastern 0 for 3. But well, we can see already in the early going, Eastern with two rebounds, a three for Michigan. Michigan usually gets dominated on the, the glass, so you can see a telltale sign in only a minute and a half in. Yep, Michigan last in the Big Ten in rebounding. They've been getting out-rebounded by an average of eight rebounds a game. Boylan's turnaround jumper from the right short corner is up and through, and so Michigan draws first blood. Schrock hustles up court right to left, right corner, James for three, and that's through. Tavlin triples, Eastern with two minutes gone by with a one point lead. Tavlin just goes to the, the far corner right in front of the Michigan bench, the one of her usual low lining shots, but good to see Tavlin get going. She didn't do that until the second half against Bowling Green. 
No, she did not. Hicks on the left wing. Michigan wants to run some time typically, but right now they want to get to the rack. They don't want to throw it up short paint. That's off. Kristen Thomas hustles down the board, gets bumped along the way, and we're going to get a Sheffer foul. A bump from behind. That'll be the first foul in the contest. And so that's the first on Sheffer, the first team foul either way. You can see Michigan wanting to go inside early. None of their four shots have been with outside of the five foot radius, and that's why the Wolverines shoot almost 43%. Tavlin wide open on the right wing. Her 15 footer fills it. And Mich uh, Eastern Michigan with a 5 2 lead. Tavlin with all five points. And Eastern's going to half court trap, and now they're going to get it up to Ryan. Right elbow cut off. Hicks swings it left corner. Three ball on the way, in and out. And a fight for the rebound pulled off by Huntley. It's a very sharp shooting Michigan team that's been very cold the last three games, uncharacteristic for Kevin Borseth's team. Uh, Michigan on the year. Uh, an offense that has put up some solid points. They really take care of the basketball. A good overall shooting team. Uh, third in the conference in field goal shooting at 43%. Schrock steps up, left-hand dribble drive, left block, puts it up, no call, contact, and now Michigan has a run out. Hicks all alone, right hand layup, right block, and the bucket's through. It's a still a 5-4 Eagles lead. Cassie doing what she wanted on that last play, driving in. She wanted to get the foul, just no call, and she was trying to leave the shot too short, and that allows Michigan to get back in easy transition the other way. Cassie, not a lot of success doing that against Bowling Green, just two of 12 in the last final game in the MAC tournament. Down low, Huntley tries to get a bucket down low. That goes up and out of bounds, tapped out by Thomas. Now Michigan wants to hustle. They say we're gonna play a little speed up game. Reynolds, right hand dribble, has to pull it out. Top side Boylan, now goes left wing Jenny Ryan. Giant Jenny Ryan, right block to Shepard. Shepard kick out, Reynolds for three, off the mark badly. That was ugly. Read it with a board, a man down for Michigan. Easter wants to run. Right hand dribble, left side Huntley. Back to Schrock for three, back iron miss, no. Boylan with a box out on the board. That's her second of the ball game. Now right hand, right side, the Saginaw Nouvelle, Catholic Central point guard against Tavlin James. Getting harassed, goes top side for Reynolds. Reynolds who puts up 10 a game, bounces it right side. Now for Jenny Ryan. Ryan, left hand dribble top of the circle, 10 on the shot clock. High screen for Hicks, Reynolds. Youth goes left side, jumper from the left corner, no, in and out. Reddit, quick box out her man, and Reynolds all alone for a bucket. Sheffer make it. Michigan takes their lead, 6 5. Back to the way, Tavlin James, no time to waste, puts up her seventh point. Eastern back in the lead by one. Tavlin seven, Michigan six. Boylan, top of the circle for Hicks. Hicks working against Huntley. Eastern showing man to man so far in this game. A lot of 2 3 zone in the MAC tournament. Now Hicks nearly lost it with a carry. Goes back to Reynolds, three-point line extension now to Boylan. Boylan beats James off the dribble, hits the deck, balls loose, picked up by Carmen Reynolds. Michigan all out of whack, four on the shot clock. Hicks has to heave it up, short corner, back to Hicks for a long three, but they'll never get it off. Solid defense by Eastern Michigan, a shot clock violation here in Ypsilanti. We're under 15 minutes to go here in the first half. Eastern Michigan with a 7-6 lead. We're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Eastern Michigan Basketball. Learn. Grow. Play. Succeed. Over 23,000 students experience it every day at Eastern Michigan University. All with the support like a private college and the advantages of a large university. Higher education without the high tuition costs that put a burden on so many students and their families. We are the Eagles of Eastern Michigan University. Come spread your wings. Back at the EMU Convocation Center, first full time out of the ball game, and Eastern Michigan leads U of M seven to six. Guys, Tavel and James, three of three from the floor. Everyone else for Eastern Michigan, 0 for six, and all three of James' shots coming very quickly. The first was a nine second possession. The second was about a 12 second possession. The third possession took three seconds. Outlet pass to Tavlin in the front court and she hit the jumper. Nothing like scoring in a hurry, but Michigan also coming back down the other end of the court. They've spread it out. Three players have scored with Boylan, Hicks, and then Sheffer all scoring, but almost everything they've done is run a lot of clock down. And we uh, looking through their notes, they're a team that only wants to get about 60 points a game. And when they do keep you under 60, they're almost unstoppable. 
Well, we know that Eastern Michigan coming off a loss in the finals is the number five seed in the MAC tournament. Took Bowling Green all the way to the wire before losing by five. Well, Michigan sort of ended on a sour note. They uh, got upset by the bottom seed, University of Illinois Illini, in the Big Ten quarterfinals after they received the bye. And uh, Michigan coming off uh, the second most conference wins in program history sort of had a dud and they lost to Illinois in the Big Ten tournament. And so they're coming in with a sour taste in their mouth. And you have to think that Michigan perhaps maybe doesn't want to be here. Well, they, I got to watch that game. It was on uh, television and they certainly didn't look like they wanted to play in the first half. They got it go in the second half though. Schrock gets it down low to Reddit. Reddit, right block jumper from close range. No, bit distracted by Sheffer. So that's off the mark. Michigan left to right. In the maze and the blue, Thompson has checked in. Thompson, the sophomore out of Plymouth, Minnesota, 6'4". She's a guard, and she gets it down low, stolen away by Schrock. Cassie stepped in front of it like a free safety. Left side, Wills. Wills down low to Reddit. Reddit all alone from the right block, lays it in. What a fresh feed from Deja. Eastern Michigan takes a three-point lead. Paige Big in that MAC tournament. She had two double-doubles, and that brought her total to four. So really coming alive offensively, almost now a double-figure a game night is the Kansas City native. Reynolds, right hand, right side, checked by Kristen Thomas. Eastern will stay in the man-to-man. -man. Now Jenny Ryan, left elbow, gonna throw it down low in the block to Sheffer, and that's batted away. So Eastern Michigan very active defensively, as you mentioned earlier, Greg. This is a team in Eastern Michigan that steals uh, 398 coming into the game. Uh, Michigan just 212. Yeah, top 25 nationally in steals. Three on the shot clock. Boylan down the avenue. Left hand off the glass and through. So Boylan, who stands 5'7", goes in amongst the trees. and gets Michigan back within one. Right wing Tavlin. Now left hand's down the avenue. Kicks it out to Schrock. Schrock's going to back it out. 20 on the shot clock. 13 and 35 in the game clock. Eastern Michigan around one. Uh, the WNIT, the winner will go to Richmond or they will go to UNC Wilmington. Kristen Thomas shows a little bit of range, takes a free throw line jumper and fills it. What, Greg? Hey, she did have that uh, stick back to win it against uh, Toledo. So uh, offensive minded is KT in big time ways. They should get back their largest lead of three. Ryan goes right wing for Boylan. Boylan trying to feed the post. Sheffer over the top, batted away. Kristen Tom with those long arms, tapped it out to Tavlin. Another swipe, it's the fourth. Steal the game for Eastern Michigan. Tavlin step back, triple, in and out. That one wanted to go down, popped out to Sheffer. So we stay to three point Eastern Michigan lead. 12.45 to go in the first. Katie Thompson on the right wing. Down low to Reynolds. Reynolds up and under move over Thomas. Threw it up. Got it to go. And the foul. Might have been a little bit of fancy footwork there. Could have gotten whistled for a walk. But a good move indeed. So Reynolds will get the chance at the and one. You mentioned it could have been the uh, shuffle of the feet. Doesn't go their way though. And marches to the line. Of course, Michigan, a team that shoots very well. 74%. Uh, we all know Eastern's free throw woes. But they have marched up the charts with their performance against BG. Now ninth in the league after a 12th point uh, going into that game. Yep, they have certainly not, uh, not the advantage there for Easter. As uh, Reynolds gets the and one, down low to Reddit, flips it out, back to Wills, now to Schrock, top of the circle. Right elbow, Page takes a dribble and charges in and gets beat in a game she usually plays, taking the charge. It's gonna be the first on Page. Sheffer stood in there, took the charge, hit the deck. And gives the Eagles a turnover in a tie game. We're tied at 11, 12 21 to go. Hicks in backcourt. Michigan really lacks a true point guard. Uh, Veronica Hicks will handle the duty at times. So will Boylan, but neither one very comfortable in that role. As Eastern Michigan gets a near swipe at the free throw line. Now Huntley plays tight. Deion Hicks forces a turnover and an errant pass from Jenny Ryan. So, turnover number five for Michigan, and so now Eastern Michigan will get it backcourt. Thompson, slight token pressure, and Cassie will trot it up near the timeline. Just under 12 minutes to go, we're tied at 11. Schrock, one hand pass, top of the circle to Huntley. Huntley crossover dribble down the avenue, throws up the wild shot, and gets another charge. Back-to-back -back possessions, and Michigan's a heady team. They're ready for this aggressive Eastern Michigan attack. It's not a team drag. You really just want to go in and 
try to draw contact and hope you get a bucket or a foul. No, you don't want knowing that Michigan knows so well going against bigger, sometimes quicker foes, especially when you like some Penn State and Ohio State. And they've seen this all too well. Eastern has to try a, a little bit more to spin their offense around and get that passing lane to open that ability to go straight through the to the rack. Well, Eastern Michigan is uh, has a little bit of history with Michigan. Surprised that they have not played each other uh, is, is as far back since 2004, the last time these two teams met, December the 8th to be exact, and it was a 69 to 60 Eastern Michigan win. And so uh, Eastern with a little bit of momentum in this series, but uh, to be fair, it's been Michigan Wolverines in the all-time series with a 14 to seven advantage. So Eastern will try to continue their one game streak, but you guys a little bit surprised that they just haven't played as Wait, often as? You gotta put two and two together, Chet. Last time we played, yeah. Eastern won at U of M. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. We haven't played them ever since. True. He's a dead good team. Well, right. and look at uh, both coaches that were head in charge of those programs. Neither one is there. Susie is now at a Big Ten school, and Sue Guevara has stood up in Central Michigan, now uh, leading her Chippewas over in action tonight in WNIT action at Illinois State. But, yeah, you've uh, gone a long way, and it, it's the same could be said for the reasons you haven't played Michigan State. Eastern won that the last time they played, and when you continue to beat big-time schools, you're not going to get invited back to their house. And I guess that's the highest uh, honor of respect you could receive as a program is to be feared to play, so therefore not scheduling them. But, well, we'll see. Eastern Michigan, the underdog tonight on paper at least, but you have to like some of the advantages Eastern Michigan has, Greg, and the speed that they've shown. And Michigan, sort of a short bench, just two players they play. You think Michigan would, Eastern Michigan would try to run them ragged and get them out of breath and, and get them uh, a little, little bit out of sync. Well, as soon as you said that, they go up in press formation just to try to add a little trouble bringing the ball up court. Yep, and they do it with some fresh legs. Olivia Foudy, the true freshman out of Toledo, has checked in. She'll check uh, Sammy Arnold, who's checked in for Michigan. Their other reserve, she goes 6'4 as well. Arnold, a sophomore out of Medina, Illinois. Left block, it's caught by Sheffer. Turnaround jumper, a nice move and good touch as she fills it up. Michigan up by two, and that's the fourth point of the night for Shepard. Michigan will stay in man-to-man -man defense. Schrock will take it between the rings. Now left-hand dribbling calls out the play. Foudy at one of the elbows, and Reddit at the other. Now they'll try to post up Reddit in the left block. Nothing home, top side Huntley all alone for three. Don't do that. She triples. Eastern takes the lead. And that's the first points of the night for Huntley, and it's a one point, 14 to 13 Eastern Michigan lead. Credit a big screen by Olivia Foudy holding off Jen Ryan as she tried to go and take out Huntley. Now Sheffer against Reddit, in and out. Good defense by Page, might have had a little bit of ball on that. And Cassie wants to run it. Cassie, back to Huntley from straight away, passes up the triple, goes back to Schrock in the left hash. Working against the taller, and not as fast, Kate Thompson. Now right corner, Huntley for three again. And she fills it again. Eastern Michigan with their largest lead of four with 10 and 15 to go in the first. Hicks not wasting any time. Back to Thompson. Now to Arnold, right wing. Arnold down in the post to Ryan. Ryan kick out, Sheffer alone for three, tries to answer and does. So Sheffer with five straight as the Wolverines back within one. She's the leading scorer for the Wolverines with seven. Eagles a tough top-notch defender from the outside. The Wolverines finally get their first out of three shots to go from out there, but uh, look at the defense that'll hold Bowling Green 26 percentage points below their average. Wills loses Ryan, Foudy picks up her miss, puts it up, rolls out. We've seen a lot of near misses. They could have gone down easily tonight. Hicks, back up court for Michigan, she's third team all Big Ten, the only Michigan player to get those honors. Foudy down low, gets beat on the block, and Sheffer schools her, spins it, scores it. She now has nine, no time to waste, read it down the lane. It's a nice feed from Schrock, and they had to hack Page. She'll go to the line and shoot a pair. Page was on the quick sprint, but you really had to turn around. Good thing Michigan didn't uh, lollygag a little bit on the other end. 14 points, though, in the lane for Michigan and Eastern. You saw them going right back in the attacking lane. They've only had uh, three shots so far in the paint. 
So Page to the free throw line, a 65% free throw shooter, misses the first off of the back iron. Page read it, junior out of Belton High School in Kansas City, Missouri. Had quite a semifinal game against Toledo. All Page did was put up 18 points and have 11 rebounds. And she was a perfect four of four from the free throw line. She splits the pair there. She'll check out in favor of India Hairston. Also back in the game is Tavlin James. Eastern Michigan ties the game up at 18, 9.15 to go. Boylan back in the ball game. Left hand's top of the circle. Goes left wing. Now to Thompson, and we get a travel. Thompson dished it down low to Sheffer. Sheffer walked. That's the sixth. University of Michigan turnover. So Michigan, not a team that turns it over very often, takes care of the basketball. They're a team that uh, really assists a turnover ratio. Number two in the conference in the Big Ten, Greg, showing some bit of uh, distractions they early haven't, on. Haven't quite seen the trio of guards the Eagles run at them, though, and who they have off the bench. James gets it swatted by Ryan. Hicks will pick up the ball and go back the other way. Puts it up straight away, rolls it in. So Hicks picks up the swipe, and she scores it. She now has four. And the Wolverines get back the advantage by two. Not something you see very often. Tavlin get blocked and then her pocket pick going back the other way. She's lucky she almost didn't get the and one play as she tried to go for her own block underneath the Michigan basket. Yep, Tavlin back cross court to Schrock. Schrock working against Boylan. Under 10 on the shot clock. Schrock, right corner, threw it away. Threw it away for Tavlin, lazy pass. And now Hicks back the other way. Two on one to Boylan. Left elbow jumper, back iron miss, no. Thompson gets the board. Also gets the beak of Schrock. She shook it up. Thompson airs ball, air balls it from the corner. Huntley wants to run. Up center court, gonna take it coast to coast, gonna kick it out. Tablin all over three, a front iron miss, no. And tapped out by Katie Thompson. Eastern will keep it under their own basket when we come back to the convo. We're back in 30 seconds. It's a 20 to 19 Michigan lead. We're back after this. This is Eastern Michigan basketball. Respectful competitors. We are loyal fans. We are gracious in victory and demonstrate poise in defeat. We are leaders on the field and in the stands. We are champions in sport and in life. We are the Mid American Conference, the new mark of excellence. Tight first half, neither team with more than a four point lead. Right now it's Michigan on top of EMU, 20 to 18. Just under eight minutes left to go first half. The offenses have each just started going a little bit more here. Michigan now nine of 18 for an even 50%. Eastern Michigan seven of 19, but uh, three three pointers for the Eagles have allowed them to stay in the ball game. I'm Brian Nemirovsky sitting in, uh, Chad Bush and Greg Steiner are your regulars. And guys, 64 teams in this WNIT. They're not seeded uh, based on the bracket, but if they were, like an NCAA tournament, how close would these two teams be in terms of their seed? I would imagine uh, there would be a, a real d disadvantage probably on the Eastern side. You look, Eagles RPI about 94 following that uh, MAC tournament game. Uh, meanwhile, Michigan in the 50 range, uh, 55 to be exact. So you're probably, if that was the case, maybe a 6, 6, 11. Yeah, 6, yeah. 11 probably. And, but the same could have been said that uh, Eastern has played some almost tougher competition just because they have more wins. I say 10, 7, just because of the momentum difference. Good point. Um, I just think Michigan's, if they're, they're a stock, their stock's on the way down. If you're Eastern Michigan, stock's on the way up. But, yeah, either way, I think it's in that range. What do you think? Well, it's certainly close enough uh, based on the score that you could argue for 7-10 or, or maybe even 8-9. I think being on Eastern's court, that, that helps even yeah. things out as well. Yeah. Well, they always say uh, home court advantage is supposedly a three-point edge one way, but as many people clad in maize and blue are here, you never know. No, you would not. A lot of folks in the house tonight, unfortunately. Perhaps the maize and blue got the best of the green and white. But on the court, it's just a two-point advantage for Michigan Wolverines. Wills with it topside, left wing for James. James out there with Thomas, Hairston, and Huntley. And we're going to get a push off. And we're going to get an Eastern Michigan foul. And Kristen Thomas going to get busted with that. Kristen's 
uh, first. And check it her second and the fourth team foul. So Eastern on the defensive end. They'll stay in the man to man. And it looks like they're going to do that much of the night against Michigan, at least in the early going. Backdoor cut Hicks. Sheffer couldn't find her. Hicks thought she was going to stay. Sheffer thought she was going to go. Kevin Borseth, red faced across the way, chirping it up. Not happy. We know Borseth has uh, a little bit of temper in him. We've seen that in his uh, notoric YouTube, YouTube rant. He got a little crazy after a game. He's got a little upper Michigan uh, hot blood in him. He, he reminds me a lot of Rob Rubick from the football crew, <laughs> kind of the uh, does, same buddy. mentality. Similar hairstyle. Similar hairstyle. I don't think he's had as many concussions, though, as Rob. <laughs> the hairstyle is totally bald, folks, if you don't. <laughs> Tablin right in front of that bald head of Borseth triples. She fills it up. Tablin has 10. She's the first one to double figures. Eagles with a one-point lead. Reynolds, right wing, working against Page. Page breaks her down. Now they have to set it back top side now for Hicks. Hicks against Huntley. It's a great matchup. Huntley on Michigan's best offensive player. Now Tablin chases down Reynolds in the corner. All alone, Jenny Ryan for three, fills it. Michigan back up by two with just under seven to go here in the first. Well, Ryan and Boylan both were left open up the basically top of the key, and neither one just was waiting for the outlet pass to go up with it. Eastern couldn't get back close enough in the zone and just allowed them to free shot. Huntley's going to try to answer again with an air biscuit. That's no good. Ryan up the middle. Right side Hicks tapped away by Huntley, and so Michigan will reset it in the backcourt with Ryan. The sophomore from Saginaw. Left wing to Boylan. Boylan holds in the left point. Back to Ryan. Ryan right side to Reynolds. Down on the block now to Hicks. Hicks left hand dribble in the paint two time. Has to kick it out. One hand dish back to Sheffer for three. Back iron miss no. And Hairston with the board. Hairston up to Schrock. Schrock right corner for Tavlin. They're going to let her triple again. No, there was some uh, look like contact on that. Perhaps a block by Ryan. Eastern settling now for long jump shots. Sheffer going to settle for a long shot. She'll airball it. So Michigan's sort of playing into Eastern Michigan's fast-paced game here, Greg. And if you're an Eastern Michigan coach or fan, you got to like the fact that they're trying to repeat that same pace because that's not who they are. No, they certainly don't want to play it this style. You look at a team that, uh, of course, they had, what, uh, 11 points the other day at halftime. So a squad that certainly doesn't want to get up 16, excuse me, against the Illini. So a squad that really wants to slow it down and even still at this pace, Eagles still were looking well in the 30-point range by half, and that's more than Michigan wants to give up. No doubt. Huntley left wing for Tavlin. Tavlin holds, defended by Hicks. Michigan still in the man-to-man. -man. Huntley, right side, creates space, pulls up 11-footer, in and out, over the back, Hairston, and distracted Ryan, and I think that was either going to be over the back or Michigan ball. We got the break there. Break. India really thought uh, she might have had the edge, but... Instead, it goes back the other way. Jesse Dickerson uh, pointed towards the maize and blue. And all right, so Boylan with it. Finds some room down the avenue, throws it up, scores it, and the foul. And she just beat Tavlin James to the hole. Somehow, some way, and Tavlin over the back to Hacker. The and one opportunity for Courtney Boylan, the junior out of Chaska, Minnesota. The only other time the Michigan has been to the free throw line was on an and one chance. Eastern has been there twice, but uh, has not been able to do their usual and one opportunities. You mentioned Michigan an outstanding free throw shooting team. They miss it there. They keep it a two point lead. Now Schrock back the other way. Throws it off the glass from the left funnel. That's no, and now under five to go. Hicks the run out right side. Now working against Huntley. Backs it out to two, excuse me, a four point Michigan lead now. Their largest of the game. Jenny Ryan. Working against Schrock, top side Hicks, left wing for Reynolds. Now on the block of the newly checked in Val Driscoll, who's only played in 13 games this year, and she blew the bunny. The freshman from Stoughton, Massachusetts, missed an easy shot, and now backcourt timeout as uh, Got India a lost Hairston. contact. Is that what it is, lost contact? You wear contacts, don't I, you? I do. It was quickly located. Megan Snow, the trainer, had the saline ready. 
This is as good as it now, gets in terms of contact replacement. Did you bring your glasses in case you lose a contact tonight? We need those eyes. I will be going with the rec specs. Oh, yeah? if we lose, if we lose okay. a contact. Where's Chris Sable <laughs> when you need the guy? <laughs> hey, guys, last five possessions for Eastern. Two turnovers, two misses. Add it all up, and that four-point Eastern lead is now, to, now a four-point deficit, 12-4 Michigan run. Yikes. Well, shooting percentage, you know, again, hurting Eastern Michigan, just 33% from the floor. Michigan shooting 48%. Well, you're nearing a, the, uh, I feel like a broken record, a three and a half, a three minute scoring drought for the Eagles last field goal, 7-11, but we saw that hamper them in against Bowling Green, a eight and a half minute drought in the first half in that contest. Desiree Thomas, the true freshman from Waterford Mott, throws an errant pass that she's lucky didn't get picked. Schrock out of back, Huntley goes right corner. Eight of the shot clock, Huntley lost it. No, she didn't, got it to Schrock. Thomas, corner, three ball, got it. Wow, Desiree Thomas with a Vinnie Johnson-like line drive three from the corner, and she fills it up. Wow. Just a little jitterbug. She got her uh, step over the way and line drive and in. Thankfully, not a whole lot of arc on that one, or it was going right back to Ann Arbor. Boiling down the avenue, and we're going to get a travel. Could have been a charge, could have been a travel. The officials will call it a walk. We'll take it. The crowd starting to get fired up. The folks in green and white on their feet making some noise. We'll be back in 30 seconds. It is a one point Michigan Wolverines lead with 349 to go. This is Eastern Michigan women's basketball. Diversity. Integrity. Teamwork. Service. Perseverance. These values guide our member universities, the Mid-American Conference, the new mark of excellence. In neck here in the first half between the two Division I Washtenaw County schools, Michigan 25, Eastern Michigan 24, heading toward the halftime buzzer. Got 349 left to go before the break. Eastern Michigan using the triple to get back into the game. Last two field goals have been from downtown, Tavlin James and then the seldom used Desiree Thomas. Looking at the individual scoring, uh, James the only player in double figures, she has 10. Sydney Huntley hit back-to-back -back triples for six points. Those are Eastern's leaders. On the other side, it's Rachel Shepard, the inside presence for Michigan, nine points, three boards. Courtney Boylan has six from her point guard position. Thank you, Brian Nemirovsky. I'm Chad Bush, Greg Steiner, and JP, John Patelka back in the studios, back in uh, cozy Ypsilanti down the street in the 89.1 studios. And uh, well, both these teams have WNIT experience from a year ago. Eastern went down to West Lafayette and lost at Purdue, but it was a close ball game, 56 to 50. In fact, Eastern had the lead in the first half. Well, University of Michigan, they made it all the way to the semifinals of the WNIT before getting knocked out by the Hurricanes of the University of Miami. And I guess they had all of their games at home, Greg, in Chrysler Arena, but they did make quite a run, including a couple of wins against uh, MAC teams. Yeah, they got to kind of beat up a little bit on MAC opponents. They took down Kent State, 34 points. They allowed the Golden Flashes, who were kind of phoning it in, it seemed like, and then beat Toledo and came back Northwestern, Syracuse, and the Hurricanes of Miami. Hairston gets a feed from Schrock in the left block, turnaround jumper off the glass, and she gets it in. How India Hairston, how about that? More importantly, how about Cassie Schrock? Nine assists in the first half, and you figure her career high is 11. Wow. Well, triple-double. She's always a triple-double threat. We know that. So we've got a 26-25 ball game. Eastern on top by one. Boylan wheels around, left hand back to Hicks for three, long, and Schrock over the top of the board. Cassie wasted no time, wants to hustle it up to Thomas. Thomas catches it in the middle of the paint, goes down the lane, hooks it with the right hand, and missed it. Boylan with a board. Might have rushed it there. Michigan, left to right. Boylan now dishes off to Hicks. Hicks left wing for Ryan. Top side for Boylan. Boylan right wing for Reynolds. Reynolds working against Reddit. She gets in a nice defensive stance for a big girl. Loops it down low through the hands of Driscoll. Driscoll lost it, tipped away by Huntley, stolen by Schrock. Eastern with a three on three. Huntley left side, pulls up, 15 footer on the way, fills it up. Eastern Michigan now with a three point lead, two and a half to go. 
Come back, you get the rebound over top of a taller Michigan player and then Sydney, you undersized guard at best in the Mac, still able to rise up and in. Huntley now with eight. Trying to follow up a performance in the Mac tournament where she was player of the game. Down low, Driscoll gets a short bunny again opportunity. She blew it. She's 0 for 3 from the floor. We can see why she doesn't play much. Schrock back to Huntley. Three ball on the way. Air ball and a hustle by Reddit, but no chance there. And so Huntley off the mark. Eastern from downtown tonight. Not too shabby. 5 of 12, 42%. We'll take that, Greg, but that one just didn't look too dang pretty. It didn't look too pretty, but it still keeps it in Michigan's mind that you're going to pull out and shoot no matter what. Yep. Reynolds between the rings against Reddit. High screen from Hicks. Now left hand dribble. Huntley picks her up. Falls on the deck. It's loose. Reynolds loses her dribble. Down low to Sheffer. Sheffer had it batted away by Hairston. Eastern all over the defensive area. We get a travel. Reynolds tried to go between Huntley and Hairston. Good luck getting between the two H's. No chance. They flip it over. Yeah, Sydney's got those big tree trunk legs, right? Tough to get through. <laughs> She's got those arms that are just two quick as picks. lightning. Yeah. <laughs> Well, two of hers or one of Harrison's, right? <laughs> Come on, Nemo. I usually get away with those things when you're not here. <laughs> it's a new sheriff in town. That's a Fulton reference. <laughs> Schrock, right wing to Tavlin. Tavlin, left-hand dribble, left side Schrock. Schrock tries to dish down low to Harrison. And no ball fake. Gets a bat back in her face, a spike. So Eastern will reset it. A minute 20 to go till halftime. Eastern up by three, 28-25. Schrock to trigger to our left. Gets it into Tavlin and a steal. Ryan picks it off. Hicks to Boylan. Boylan, left-hand dribble. Thomas tightly contested. And now Eastern gets it back off the miss. James on the run. Loops it down to Schrock. Schrock down low. Cutting is Reddit. Lays it in and a foul. Oh, another fresh feed from Schrock. She's got 10 already in this game, Greg. That is something else considering the EMU postseason record for assists is eight in a game. That's saying something, throw that out the window, obliterating a record that uh, Erica Ford had held since Kentucky in that NIT game back in 2005. Reddit eyes the rim and gets the and one. Eastern Michigan, their largest lead of six, and it comes with one minute to go. So a little bit of a run here. Hicks, the senior, the only senior on this Michigan team, by the way. We'll go right wing for Boylan. Boylan, top side for Thompson for three. Back iron miss, no. And Eastern Michigan will look to add to their 10-0 run here with 45 ticks left to go in the first. Schrock will call back to head coach Amory Gilbert and say, what do you want me to run? She gets the call. Schrock gets across the timeline. Throws a pass again, it's tipped by Hicks, and luckily Michigan, Eastern Michigan gets it back. 10 on the shot clock, 28 on the game clock. Schrock, now with seven, now six in the shot clock. Pulls up, three ball on the way, no, back iron miss. India Hairston all over the glass, resets it. So Eastern now can take the final shot if they wish. Now Pet Reddit gets it stripped from behind. So, you gotta keep that ball above your head when you're 6-2, otherwise people like Boylan will swipe it. She's got it. Left-hand dribble down the avenue between Hairston. Throws it up off the glass. Rims off. No. At the buzzer. Hicks puts it up. Reverser. No good. So we go to the break. Eastern Michigan finishes the second half on a 10-0 run. And they take the six-point lead to halftime. We'll be back to the Convocation Center in Ypsilanti. It's the WNIT first round. Can Eastern Michigan pull the upset? Stand by. Joe Cruz with a sports update, and we'll follow that up with a first half analysis by Greg Steiner when we come back. You're listening to Eastern Michigan Basketball. Fuller, Josh Cribs, and a fat head having back here, back here at the Convocation Center, halftime of this WNIT first round game. Your Eastern Michigan women's basketball team with a six point lead, 31 25 over the hated Wolverines of the University of Michigan. I'm Greg Steiner. Chad Bush will be back in a second. We also thank Brian Nemoroski for his fill-in responsibilities as our executive producer on site. Chelsea Atcho also along the way. Jeff Fulton out tonight, but we hope to have him back soon enough. John Patalka back in our WEMU studios and Joe Cruz all season long with your halftime updates. Let's take a quick back look back at how this game developed in the first half and a 
half that uh, never saw either side take larger than a three-point lead for the first uh, 12 minutes of the ball game. It was a Courtney Boylan jumper in the lane that got the scoring started two and a half, or minute and a half into the game, but Eastern came right back with a Tavlin James three-pointer as she scored the Eagles' first seven points as the Eagles jumped out to a three-point lead at nine to six with about 14 and a half minutes to play. Back came the Wolverines, though, to tie the score at 11 on a Carmen Reynolds and one opportunity as we headed to the second media timeout. Eastern would grow the lead back to four on a Sydney Huntley back-to-back three-pointer, 17-13, as we had an under 10 minutes to play. And lead would seesaw back and forth, Michigan finally taking its biggest lead of the half on at 4, 25-21 on a Courtney Boylan layup with 5.05 to go. But that would be all the scoring the Wolverines would have the rest of the first period. Eastern came back with a 10-0 run, holding the Wolverines without a field goal for the final 5.05. Devzeray Thomas started with a three. Indy Harrison came back with a jumper of her own. Sydney Huntley had a runner in the lane on a fast break, and then Paige Reddito and one opportunity, and that's your six-point margin here at the break. Eastern Michigan shot in the first half, just 12 of 31, 38%, but they were five of 13 from the outside and only made three trips to the free throw line, making two of those. Leading the way for Eastern was Tablin James with 10 points right behind her. Sydney Huntley had eight, Paige Reddit six, three points from Desiree Thomas and a pair each from Kristen Thomas and India Hairston. No scoring out of Cassie Schrock, but the story has been her ability to distribute the rock. 11 assists, an EMU postseason record in the first half. 0 of 6, though. Schrock needs to get it going in typical Jeff Fulton action if the Eagles want to be moving on to either Richmond or UNC Wilmington in just a few days. For the Wolverines, Rachel Sheffer leads the way with nine on four of nine shooting. She also has three rebounds as the Wolverines held a two-point edge in that category. Also leading for Michigan, six points from Courtney Boylan, four points from Veronica Hicks, and a three each from Carmen Reynolds and Jenny Ryan. Michigan shot 11 of 30, 36%, two of eight from the outside, and just one, just two trips from the free throw line, making one of them. Michigan 10 turnovers, seven for Eastern Michigan. They've caused a lot of havoc. Just three steals, though, to their credit. They've also blocked a pair of shots. 18 points for the Michigan in the paint, 10 for Eastern. Nine second chance, or excuse me, nine points off turnovers for the Eagles. And two second chance points for Michigan. Fast break the story for the Eagles. They doubled up Michigan 8-4. We saw nine lead changes and two ties in that first half, guys. And a pretty stellar first half of basketball both ways. And if we see anything to the same level in the second half, it's going to go right down to the wire, Chad Bush. Yeah, the one thing that really sticks out and is surprising to me in this ball game early on is that Eastern Michigan is getting out-rebounded. All right, Michigan is last in the Big Ten in rebounding. They've been getting out-rebounded by an average of eight rebounds a game, and they've only been out-rebounded. U of M has only out-rebounded the other team in Big Ten once this year, and it was sorry, Indiana, by one rebound. Okay, right now, they have a two-rebound advantage against Eastern Michigan. So a little bit surprised, a little bit concerned, and uh, this is an opportunity where Eastern Michigan thought they could get some second-chance opportunities and the strength of Eastern Michigan in this ball club is offensive rebounding. So very surprised at that. I would think that that would be something in the second half that you would look for Eastern Michigan to really focus on, crash the glass. Well, and I think if you break that down, Chad, it's not the inside players for Michigan who are getting the rebounds. Four for Boylan, she's about 5'6", and, and four for Hicks, who plays a lot of point guards. So maybe in the second half, an adjustment where Eastern's guards may not uh, run up so quickly in, into the fast break offense and might actually put a body on their, their player to get a rebound. Well, I think the biggest thing out of Eastern's post is you can usually expect a lot out of Kristen Thomas and Paige Reddit. The two of those have combined for just three boards and it's uh, been India Hairston. It's nine minutes of play, six on her tally for the night. You can't uh, just rely on India to go in there. Everybody else has less than 
two rebounds. And yeah, that Eastern a team that when they're in man-to-man, -man, so certainly they rebound better, and that may be something we talk about in the second half. So we will find out how this thing will go down. Eastern Michigan trying to win to advance the WNIT. If they win here tonight, they will play either the University of Richmond or they will play UNC Wilmington. UNC is University of North Carolina and Wilmington. And uh, if you're asking us where we want to go, Greg, uh, what are your thoughts? Who would you rather play? I've already got a text from my father saying if we're going to Wilmington, he's along for the road trip. So, uh, All right. So at least one Steiner is in for the road trip. So um, my guess is uh, the Richmond squad is 18 and 11 on the season. Meanwhile, the Seahawks of UNC Wilmington are 23 and 8. So uh, matchup wise, you'd probably prefer to see the Spiders than a a Seahawks squad that could be very dangerous on their home court. Yeah, I also, for selfish reasons, would like to see UNC Wilmington, a good friend of mine and an EMU Eagle uh, radio fan. Chris Packey is uh, just about an hour and a half away in Chapel Hill. And you has guys already both, said both know people near Wilmington? <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is not exactly NYC. That, that's pretty remarkable. <laughs> Come on. Well, hold the, on. The last few years that I've gone with you places, there's a person in every city <laughs> that Nemo will be like, oh, I got to go see that guy. I'm, I know her. So don't give me that. Come yeah. on. And how about Wilmington, North Carolina, is where uh, they film Eastbound and Down, the popular HBO series. Which is set in? Which is set in Detroit. North Carolina. Uh, is it in North Carolina? No, it's set in North Carolina. Detroit, right. Yeah, yeah, you're thinking hung. Yeah, Jeff Fulton yep. would never have made that. So. No, Je yeah, you're okay there. <laughs> well, before we get the second half of action underway, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is EMU Basketball. By the way, there is no Jeff Fulton here tonight. Ryan Nemirowski is stepping in for him, and we do want to, uh, in all sincerity, wish Jeff a, a healthy and Absolutely. happy recovery. And we really do hope that uh, Jeff gets better. And uh, we know he's out of the hospital. He's doing much better. And uh, Greg, I know you got a chance to see him the other day, and we, uh, we really uh, hope he gets back soon. Certainly do. We can't do this without Fully, and we need him back. Also. Another shout out to somebody who is in the hospital, Carol Frisbee, a big EMU fan right now. We wish her the best, and she looks for an EMU victory. All right. Well, it's a quick offensive attack for Michigan as they throw up a long three by Reynolds. That's off the mark, no, but it's tapped out by Eastern. So Michigan will get it back with a fresh 30, which is 13 seconds gone by. Eastern Michigan with a six-point lead here at the break. Boylan with it, right point in front of the University of Michigan bench. Michigan right to left and Mason Blue. Eastern defending in white with the green Eastern Michigan across the chest. Numbers sandwiched in between. Left block, Shepard. Left hand dribble in the paint. Kicks it out to Reynolds. Reynolds down the avenue, cut off, has to kick it back to Ryan. Ryan to Boylan, 10 on the shot clock. Boylan, the lefty, kicks it out for Hicks. Corner three on the way, front iron miss, no. Schrock with the board, Eastern Michigan with a three on one. James down the avenue, nobody will catch her, she'll lay it in. Tavalin gives Eastern their largest lead of the ball game of eight. When Eastern gets out like that, nobody at any level is going to run down an EMU player in a track meet. Down low, Michigan tries to defend on the post. They'll have to kick it out to Hicks. Hicks to Boylan, left corner. Reynolds for three, in and out. So Michigan settling for three balls. And Eastern trying to capitalize on the transition. Huntley gets an avenue down the lane, throws it up. No, offensive stick back. Yes! Page read it all over the glass. Eastern Michigan up 10. Kevin Borseth not going to take a timeout here. Sage is going to clap his hands 10 times. Left side, Ryan. Ryan down on the left block now to Sheffer. Sheffer, right hand, no look. Shot up, nope. She pushed off. Offensive rebound, Michigan. Eastern gets it back, left to right with a 10 point lead. And here comes Deja Wills, the senior out of Indiana, and the true freshman, Desiree Thomas. Amory Gilbert wants to talk to her two star guards. I don't know what she couldn't have liked out of that first one and a half minute. Well, the only thing she can probably ask them a little bit is don't allow Michigan to get point blank range. The only thing Eastern is lucky for is they can't make a shot from that close. There's a lid sitting on that basket right now, it seems. Yep, Schrock in the right block. No field goals yet in this game. Tries to rim one up the left hand. That's off the mark. So Cassie's woes continue from the floor. Cassie now 0-7. Deja Wills gets a steal right wing. 
Going to have a two on three, going to kick it back to Thomas. Thomas going to slow it down. Back to Schrock, top of the circle. Now back to Thomas. And now Cassie will get the volleyball pass back in front of Boylan. Left hand dribble, left side in front of the Eastern Michigan bench. Cassie in the corner, back to Thomas. Thomas fakes the overhead pass. One dribble down to Schrock in the corner. Hairston, two time in the left block, swatted out of there. And Eastern Michigan will keep it with six on the shot clock. Emery Gilbert lobbing across the way with a far side official. Trying to get that call. Jesse Dickerson. Down low, Reddit offensive rebound, sticks it back up. No, Schrock is on the deck and in pain. Oh, she's holding her stomach, her chest. The officials aren't going to make a call. Michigan takes advantage, hits a shot. And Cassie in serious pain, holding her stomach. Oh, I think somebody might have stepped on her. Megan Snow races out on the court to find out what's going on with the star senior out of Wadsworth. Looking the other way, but that's... Cassie, a player that's a gamer in a lot of regards, and she may show a lot of uh, facial expressions and whatnot sometimes when she does go down, but this is usually a situation you don't see Cassie on the ground very often. I just talked to Cassie's father out on the concourse as I was grabbing a Mountain Dew at the break, and uh, he was certainly not happy with the way the officials were not calling her aggressive play. Thought he could have, she could have gotten a couple calls there and well now he just wants to make sure his daughter's okay as she now comes to her seated position on the court and I thought she might have gotten stepped on on her way back up the court it's the only thing I can think of looks like the wind is knocked out of her perhaps her ribs what do you think Nemo yeah, it's definitely in the ribs and that can be a, a dangerous spot you don't have a lot of padding there and it's easy to, to kind of crack something or, or get it out of place but as Greg said you've seen her come back from times when she was in a lot, a lot of pain, and you have to expect that here, well, given the magnitude of the game. And with Cassie, you almost have to have had one leg cut off before she wouldn't <laughs> try to still waddle back out there somehow. Yeah. By the way, uh, India Hairston started the second half, Kristen Thomas on the bench, and uh, you have to wonder what that's all about, performance or injury, not sure. Either way, Hairston stays out there along with Huntley Reddit. Desiree Thomas and Deja Wills who has it on the right wing. Michigan comes out playing a 2-3 zone. Left side short corner jumper Thomas rims off Noel Huntley over the top. Try to grab the rebound and she tapped it out in front of Hicks. Michigan will get it back right to left. Eastern Michigan with an 8 point lead. Their uh, second largest lead of the game. 17-10 to go. Hicks their star player and leading scorer. At the break, just four points. She deals it back to Boylan. Boylan, right wing for Ryan. Now down on the right block to Sheffer. Sheffer wheels, deals off the glass, rims out. Hairston with a strong rebound over the back of Ryan. That's her eighth of the ball game. Huntley shakes and bake. Back to Thomas, fake the three. Left hand dribble back to Wills. That was deflected. And the officials took a little bit of time to get that one right, but they do. Tavlin James will check in. Desiree Thomas with some solid minutes off the pine will check back out. And Eastern Michigan with 16.50 to go, 22 on the shot clock. Now Huntley holds on the left hash, working on Boylan. Huntley, the senior out of Cincinnati, right hand's right side. Now dumps it back to Tavlin, and Tavlin lost it. So mis miscommunication between Huntley and James forces another turnover. And for Eastern Michigan now in this ball game, that is their 11th, check that, their ninth turnover. Boylan between the rings, 16.30 to go. Reynolds going to try a long three. She fills it up with the left hand. So a three ball gets Michigan back within five. That's his second triple of the game. And so now Reynolds has six. Neither team shooting very well in the second half. Just two of seven both ways. So still trying to settle in after some halftime corrections and jitters. Four minutes gone by. Five point Eastern Michigan lead trying to advance Huntley scoops it around Reynolds and scores it. Went behind her back and flipped it up with some English. Greg, we saw that so often in Cleveland in the MAC tournament. Just adds a different element that a lot of teams aren't able to, to replicate, especially in practice. Huntley now with 10. Second player in double figures for Eastern. Hicks on the right block. Working against Wills and Huntley. Knocked away, stolen by Hairston. Another turnover. Michigan flips it over now for the 11th time in the game. James left corner, rejected by Hicks. And Hicks wants to talk. 
And Michigan will, Eastern Michigan will keep it. So Hicks out of Chicago swats it from James in the corner out of Detroit. So Mark went up for Chi-Town. Uh, Cassie Schrock out of the locker room, comes back with a new jersey on, and perhaps they wrap those ribs. Megan Snow now comes out. She could perhaps become very important in what she does here, uh, whatever she did behind closed doors. Guys, the number here uh, right now, 12, looking at the stat sheet. Tavalin James, leading scorer in the game with 12 points. Cassie Schrock has 12 assists, and you sure would love for her to add to that if she could get back into this game. And in the last 12 possessions for Michigan, going back to the end of the first half, just two field goals. Eastern Michigan uh, not only defending the initial shot well, but also doing a better job on the defensive glass. Yep, better on the glass, better defensively, Ryan, as you... Uh uh, mentioned and well Eastern the second best in the conference in field goal percentage defense on the year and, and one of the top rebounding the top offensive rebounding team in the conference and you knew that was going to be the advantage early on uh, you were hoping and as you mentioned Eastern now has pulled ahead in that advantage 25 24 and when Michigan out rebounds their opponent they have a serious advantage in wins and so you'd like to continue to see that trend downward and can t stay consistent for Michigan. Same could be said when Eastern out rebounds their out opponent though. 14 and six when they don't. Seven and six are the green and white. A lot of commonalities in this uh, ball game by the way. Most of them not on the court. Uh, common bonds I should say. Uh, U, of M, U of M's athletic media relations office has a uh, former Eastern Michigan flavor to it. The associate director, Tom Wyrot. And of course, our very own Sarah Van Meter. We still can claim her, right? Absolutely. All right, she's their communications coordinator. And of course, Sarah Van Meter, a big part of our last win over Michigan. And Sarah's here tonight wearing neutral colors. I know uh, you got a Good chance to point. talk to her before the game. She said she'd never been as torn as she feels tonight going into this game. Somebody <laughs> who's not wearing Neutral colors, Melissa Polhorns decked out all in her maize and blue as the staff trainer for the Wolverines. That's right. Tavlin James jumps it up. 15-footer is filled through the lane. And so now Eastern jumps back in the lead. They now got a 39-30 advantage. Thompson, top side. Katie Thompson left wing for Reynolds. Reynolds spins in the lane against Thomas, throws up a wild shot off the glass, and she got bailed out. Oh boy, that's one where she lost balance, control of the ball, and you just gotta let her go. Instead, she'll get rewarded at the free throw line where she shoots a healthy 81%. Yeah, the one thing you didn't wanna do is allow her to take a few free tosses. Two of five had she been overall on the day, the second most, or third most uh, shots on the team in this ball game. Greg, the other uh, commonality on the bench for Michigan is former Eastern Michigan assistant, and we mentioned in the pregame, Tiana Kirkland, who was here in the 06-07 season. Back to the way, James Smith's a similar jumper. Wills gets an offensive rebound. Her flip-up desperation heave, no, but she was just trying to get to the line. And that's exactly what she will get rewarded with. So the rebound's really starting to come full circle for Eastern Michigan, as they now have a four rebound advantage, and Wills to the line to shoot a pair. Big credit to Deja, she just got the rebound, went right back up with it, knew she was at her sideways, and just had to toss it up because she knew that Michigan was gonna foul her and she'd get the two free attempts. She splits the pair, Thomas fights for the board, Ryan wins that battle. Five seniors for Eastern Michigan, just one for U of M. So knowing it's your last game, you gotta like Eastern's advantage with five seniors perhaps facing their final contest in their collegiate career. Ryan wheels and deals right block jumper, no. Eastern on the, with numbers on the run. Wills in the corner had an open three if she handled it cleanly, but a tough pass at her feet didn't allow that. She gets it back in the left wing, tries to feed Reddit in the block, gets it. She's three time. Back to Deja in the corner and she lost it. That's twice she mishandled a pass that she was wide open and neither pass was really precise. Well, when you just don't have sometimes the calming influence, you look out and you got two players that don't usually handle the ball a lot with Wills and Desiree Thomas. Yep, Schrock still on the bench with that injury, trying to get in. 
Now uh, Arnold gets it on the right block, and the big 6-4 sophomore fills it up. So that gets Michigan back to within seven. That's the first point of the night for the sophomore, Sammy Arnold. Desiree Thomas running the point, goes topside for James. James blows by Ryan, puts it up, got it rejected from behind, though, by the defender Ryan that she just smoked to the hole. So Eastern will get it back, will inbounds it to our right, to the left of their bucket. And listen to the crowd now as Cassie Schrock checks back in along with Sidney Huntley. Huntley to trigger, into James. James right corner between the legs against Thompson. Back top side for Schrock. Schrock will back it out. Jenny Ryan in her face, the sophomore from Saginaw Nouvelle. Five on the shot clock. Back to Huntley, left corner in front of the Eastern Michigan bench for three. Rims out, no offense, a rebound, yes. But Reddick got hit on the noggin. No call, trickles out. Michigan will keep it. Oh. Amory Gilbert says, hey, what do I got to do to get a foul call? Certainly, certainly playing physical, but they're going both ways, not calling a whole lot of fouls. Just two for Michigan and one for Eastern. A long bomb in front of the Michigan bench by Thompson off the mark. Huntley with the board and racing up the right sideline. Shake and bake against Ryan off the glass. Got it to go. And they're going to wave it off. Oh, a good flop job by Ryan. Gets that bucket waved right out of the building. So Sydney, the offensive foul by Huntley. Sydney giving her best. She continues to move up the chart. She needed 55 points coming in today to get to 1,000. And she's got 10 so far. She was very curious the other day how close she was going to be. <laughs> if she wins this, she's got a good shot at it. A left-hand looper from Arnold in a sweet move off of a spin. And that scores it. So the Wolverines now back within five. It was a six-point Eastern Michigan lead at half. And now Arnold has 11 on back-to-back -back buckets for the blue. Under 13 minutes to go. Eastern trying to advance to the second round of the WNIT. It would send him to Richmond, Virginia or Wilmington, North Carolina. We'll find out after the game. Read it down the lane, and she traveled. She got tied up, and she walked, and Paige trying to get the walksies out of her system. Just seems to get at least one or two a game. Three straight turnovers for Eastern, guys. Looks like Michigan's maybe changed to a little bit more of a zone, and Eastern's not adjusting. Nope. And Eastern stayed with that man-to-man, -man yet to go to that zone. Thompson wheels and deals and wildly in the lane throws it up. Ryan over the back to get the rebound. She got busted and the foul on Michigan. So it's 12.29 to go. Eastern down by, Eastern up by five. That'll just be the first foul on Jenny Ryan. Now Michigan switches up, goes man to man as Schrock walks it across the timeline. Holds up play number one. Left hand dribble left side now. Head genius Hicks, back to Reddit, top of the circle. Now Schrock back to Reddit. Reddit swings it right wing for James. James, top side Huntley, Huntley dribble drive. Right elbow jumper, up, no. Might have been a deflection there. And a nice save back by Reddit. Huntley fires it at the buzzer, it fills it up! Oh, a triple with the buzzer off of a hustle play by Page. Gives Eastern Michigan an eight point margin. Just desperation, she got it up and last by her fingertips to go with the red light about to go on. Huntley gets a little aggressive on Hicks as she tries to penetrate in the paint. And we get an Eastern Michigan timeout, a media timeout. Foul, the third on Huntley. So with 11.44 to go, Eastern Michigan looking good. They've got a 43-35 lead. We're back to Ypsilanti after this. This is Eastern Michigan women's basketball. Learn, grow. Play. Succeed. Over 23,000 students experience it every day at Eastern Michigan University. All with the support like a private college and the advantages of a large university. Higher education without the high tuition costs that put a burden on so many students and their families. We are the Eagles of Eastern Michigan University. Come spread your wings. Eastern Michigan at home with the lead in the first round of the women's NIT. They lead the University of Michigan 43 to 35, an eight point EMU edge with 11.44 to go in the ball game. It's been a game of where really small differences are going to determine the outcome. Eastern shooting a little bit better, 37% to 36% for U of M. 
They've made three more three-pointers than the Wolverines and now have eight more rebounds than the Maize and Blue Eastern with a 33-25 edge led by India Hairston's eight boards, Paige Reddit's six rebounds, and Reddit just uh, maybe with one of the plays of the game to keep a possession alive, leading to a, an Eastern three when they were back on their heels. She never lets Eastern go quietly. She just raced in, dove through the dance team, and really just heaved it back out. She's lucky she found anybody on the outlet pass, and then Sydney uh, Johnny on the spot to rise up with it, and down goes the basket, the first of this second half from the outside for Eastern, five of 15 you mentioned at 33%. Michigan certainly causing a little trouble for them on uh, the ability to get close shots and that's uh, the reason you have 16 points in the paint though. Yeah, they have held Michigan, uh, as you mentioned, 36% on the night on the season. They're a sharp shooting team, they shoot uh, pretty solidly, 43%, that's third best in the conference. Sam Arnold with a long three attempt, no good. Reddit tries to wrestle it away from Ryan. Ryan wins the battle, flips it up, no, but a whistle and a foul, and Ryan back to the free throw line. And surprise, she won that battle over Reddit. But a rare offensive rebound for Michigan, and Ryan will shoot free throws, and Ryan will miss the first. A 78% free throw shooter, a Michigan team, Greg, that uh, really shoots well from the free throw line. 74%. Michigan team that's certainly not quite normal Big Ten capacity. They're very undersized for what you expect. We saw Big Ten team in Ohio State really just, they ran taller everybody out there and Michigan can't say the same. Schrock between Ryan, between Arnold, lays it up and in. Her first field goal of the night. She went off the square and scores it. So, Eastern Michigan back up 10. First two points of the night for number 22. Left block, Reynolds gets position on Reddit. She walked, no call, it rims out. The ball doesn't lie. Rebound by Desiree. Right hand dribble. And Ryan knocks it out of her hand. She gets it back. Schrock now free throw line extension. Back to Wills. This will bring the house down if she fills it. And she does. 13 points for Michigan lead. Kevin Borseth wants timeout in Ypsilanti. Eagles up 13. The maize and blue are silent here at the Combo Center. We're back in 30. There's 10 and 48 to go. Hang on, everybody. About to see an upset. We'll find out. This is Eastern Michigan basketball. Diversity. Integrity. Teamwork. Service. Perseverance. These values guide our member universities, the Mid-American Conference, the new mark of excellence. Eight straight points for Eastern Michigan here in the second half, and the Convo Center is rocking. Started with that last second three by Sydney Huntley just before the shot clock expired. Then Schrock with her 800th career twisting layup as she goes up among three <laughs> taller players and, and got it off the window. And then Deja Wills on a really nice set play. They flooded the right side of the court. Wills camped out on the left side and dropped the triple to put Eastern Michigan up 48 to 35. The eight straight points giving Eastern Michigan their largest lead of the game at 13. Sydney Huntley now the leading scorer in the game with a Baker's dozen. Davlin James had 12 at the half. Uh, she's been quieter here in half number two. Well, you guys, you got to look at Michigan, give them props on what they've done this year. They've got a heck of a resume. I mean, these folks in Ann Arbor thought they were going to get a bid. There was the ESPN guy, who, and I forget his name, forgive me, but he does the predictions. He's the uh, Joe Lenardi of the women's tournament, that geek. Well, there's a geek like that for the women's tournament. And this guy had Michigan in there. It's like a 10 seed. So it was a, an impressive resume for Kevin Borseth. They beat Ohio State twice. They beat nationally ranked Boston College once. Uh, I mean, Greg, there was some thought that this team could have gone to the NCAA. Certainly would have, should have, and but instead they're here and right now certainly on the ropes in the convo. Thompson for three, and that hushes up the home crowd as the Thompson triple gets the Wolverines back within 10. That's her first three points. Thompson. A sophomore out of Plymouth, Minnesota, a very healthy 42% from downtown. 
Schrock back the other way, three-point line extension. Top side to Thomas. Thomas, right wing for Wills. Wills back for Thomas. Thomas left wing to Schrock. Huntley and James getting extended minutes on the bench here. Wills for three again. No, in and out. Ryan with the board, her sixth of the night. Now back to the way, swipe by Wills. She read it like a free safety, lays it up off the glass, and scores it over Ryan. Oh, a swipe and a score. Deja Wills playing her best game of the year, hands down. Hands down, and the best thing to think of it this way, she missed those five games during the East Slate. She's probably got the freshest legs of anybody on this ball club right now. Great point. Boylan, step back, elbow jumper, no. Schrock with the board, has a streaking Deja Wills, couldn't find her. Now right hand, down the paint, back to Wills, thought about a three, thought better of it. That's senior leadership. Now back in the corner to Schrock. Schrock will back it out. 20 in the shot clock, 9.26 in the game clock. Eastern Michigan with a 12, that's right, 12 point lead over the maize and blue. Schrock will back it out, gets the call on the left hash. Left corner, Wills, she wants another three, not this time. Front iron miss, ball off somebody's foot, but Michigan picks it up. Sheffer with a board, Hicks with a ball. Hicks from Chicago down the avenue, left hand layup, up and good. And a pretty move for the third team all big tenor. Lane just kind of cleared entirely for her and Easter never put a hand in her face. Shrock's entry pass, right post to Reddit. Reddit against Sheffer, left hand layup, up and good and an up and under move was sweet. 52-40, Eastern back up 12, Reddit now at 10. Third Eastern Michigan player in double figures. Shepard on the lane, kick out Hicks, corner three ball on the way, back iron miss, no. Ryan boxed out, Schrock puts it up, scores it. Ryan's starting to pick up steam now as Schrock loses the ball, Wills picks it up, gives it back to Cassie, and so here we go. Easter wants to run some clock, and Amory Gilbert wants to talk it over. We'll keep it right here. We're not going anywhere. 8.18 to go. Eastern Michigan with a cool 10-point lead. And well, what can you say, Greg? A lot on the table here, but Eastern Michigan, a lot of things they haven't done in program history on the line here tonight. Certainly are. You talk about Coach Gilbert wanting to get off the snide against a Big Ten team. She's now on her, this will be their third game. She, of course, lost to Purdue last year and Ohio State early in the season, so she wants to get that in. And uh, I don't know about you, uh, Nemo and I weren't around, but the last time the Eagles beat the University of Michigan here at home, you gotta go back to December 18th, 1979, a 56-49 victory at then venerable Bowen Fieldhouse. The old barn, I'm sure, was rocking that night. I was in Macon, Georgia, and I was three years old. So. We can name a few people who were around, who were there. <laughs> uh, the three of us, not there. Uh, Streets and Fully were somewhere in the John building. C. Fountain, I'm yeah. sure, was there. Yep, yep. Well, I'm wondering, was that when uh, WEMU had even started doing women's games? It may not have uh, quite happened yet. Hard to say. I got the feeling Clark was around for that one. He might have been around. All right, top of the circle, Huntley, right wing for Schrock. Schrock trying to post up Reddit. Five of the shot clock, right elbow. Kick out Huntley, quarter ball for three. Airballed it. Ryan gets the tap off of uh, Sheffer's deflection. That's her ninth rebound. She's a 5'9 guard, not a bad night. Thompson, wild shot, no. Gets the tip back, she traveled. Underneath her own bucket. Michigan all out of whack. Kevin Borseth on tilt across the way. Slamming both hands into both his pockets. Red faced. He's seen enough. We haven't seen enough. We're going to keep it here. 52-42, Eastern Michigan lead, under eight to go. And you had to wonder coming into this one. Eastern Michigan feeling good about themselves. The number five seed, Greg, they get to the MAC tournament. Yeah, they lose their final game to Bowling Green, a team who's going to play now uh, potentially to move on and beat Georgia Tech. But Eastern feeling good, feeling good about their season. 22 wins. Michigan came in. They had played in two weeks. They lost to University of Illinois in the first round. And uh, really a team that, you know, thought, well, we should have been. We belonged elsewhere. We're entitled elsewhere. We're going to the WNIT again. We already owned that tournament last year. We went to the semifinals. So maybe some intangibles here on Eastern's side of the fence. Well, and I think the biggest thing is Eastern's seen for the last four trips, uh, they've got to be the one that plays one game, goes home, and calls it a career for a lot of these players. They don't want Cassie Schrock, Deja Wills, and Kristen Thomas, and Raina Spencer to go home with a sour taste in their mouth. At least they can 
forever say we're the first team to do something if they haul and win this last 748 of basketball, but uh, you gotta give Eastern credit. They could have phoned it in as we've seen a lot of teams do in a postseason when they're not thrilled to be here, but Eagles and Coach Gilbert have got her squad ready to roll. They sure do, and, and these teams, by the way, do have some common opponents. They both played, uh, University of Detroit, Ohio State, and Buffalo, and uh, Eastern lost to all three of those teams. Uh, Michigan beat Ohio State uh, twice, Buffalo, and uh, lost to University of Detroit, which is a serious head scratcher. We should have beat them at home, it was a head scratcher. Michigan gets beat by 19 at home. A serious head scratcher. So there are some commonalities, and uh, you just have to wonder how Michigan beat Ohio State twice, a team now that's rolling and has knocked off Susie Merchant's squad three times this year. Yeah, you talk about Michigan State hasn't figured them out. Michigan has, and Eastern uh, also really wanting this one because they know the Wolverines have to come back here next season. That's right. That's right. Hey, you think Susie hooked up uh, Anne Marie with some tape on the Wolverines? Uh, don't think so. Okay. Okay, just a question. That would be my guess. All right. High low shock down to Reddit and loops it up with the right hand. Point blank, no. Good look though by Paige, who's put up 10 points in this game. And uh, back to the way Thompson down low to Sheffer against Kristen Thomas. And we're going to get a whistle and a foul. It's going to be a hold. And that's going to go on KT. That'll be her third. Sydney Huntley, the only other player for Eastern Michigan in foul trouble. She has three as well. Been a pretty clean game overall. Just uh, now Eastern finally 10 total fouls on the night. Michigan only with six. Now another whistle. Officials starting to get a little whistle happy here. India Hairston going to get busted. Kevin Borseth might have influenced that, standing right in front of the referee. Batten is wrist against one another. It's the Kurt Miller syndrome. When you stand in front of the coaches, you're always going to get a call. Boy, did he ever get those calls in that tournament. So, in front of their own bench, Hicks, the senior, going to run the show. Bounce pass. Right block, Boylan. Working against Tavlin. Going to kick it out to Shepard. Fakes the three-pointer. Dribbles in the paint. Working against Harrison. Fade away right hand. Look off the glass and in. Oh, you got to call that one from that far out. She gets the Wolverines back within eight. And so now... Just under seven to go. Less than a 10 point advantage. Eastern Michigan will try to change that here. Huntley, right elbow for Schrock. Tries to will her way to the bucket. Now spins around, spins back to Tavlin. Fakes a three, steps up. 18 footer in the corner. Back iron miss, no. Boylan with the board. Boylan running up center court. Overhead pass, deep down for Thompson who lost it out of bounds. But they're gonna say Hairston got a finger on it and was part of that play. So, Michigan will reset it. 24 ticks to go in the shot clock, 6.27 to go. On the game clock, Thompson fakes a three, dribbles in against Reddit between two defenders. Kicks it out right corner to Ryan, now out near center court to Boylan. Boylan to Hicks, Hicks down on the post to Sheffer. Sheffer back to Hicks, steps up, short corner, nowhere to go, cut off by two defenders, and we're gonna get a three second violation. Sheffer could have built a home in Ann Arbor the amount of time she spent in there. Now Thompson backcourt pressure, gets a steal. Swiped it from Schrock all alone. Boylan down low off the glass. Blew the bunny. Tavlin distracted it. Ryan flips it up over her head and scores it. So backcourt pressure by Michigan, a bit of a surprise, and it's turned into four Michigan points. 52-46. Wolverines have cut it to six out of the Kevin Borset timeout. Schrock, right-hand dribble. Beats Boylan to the hole, throws it up no, and finally gets a whistle. So the foul is gonna go on number two, Courtney Boylan. And for Boylan in this game, that's just her first. And for Michigan, it's just their fourth team foul. Cassie to the free throw line for the first time tonight. And she misses the first. Keep that statement in the back of your mind about the Wolverines not having foul situation yet. They're gonna have to start fouling should this lead continue for Eastern. Yep, absolutely. And Eastern a team, as you know, uh, Greg, seen them all year, 11th in the conference at free throw shooting, 66%. Cassie does bang home the second one. She has three points. 
And Eastern back up now by seven with under 540 to go. In the game, Thompson loops it down low for Steffer. Steffer shot up off the glass. No from the left block, but she is fouled. And so now free throw attempts for Sheffer. Not something Eastern wants to do, of course, send a team that shoots very well, 34%, but just uh, two of six today is the Wolverines. Sheffer gets the first one to go. She's been their best player tonight by far. 12 points, three rebounds. And she's five and 11 from the floor, gets them both. So, Michigan cuts it to within five, 5.30 to go. Token backcourt pressure by Michigan. Schrock will take it up against Hicks. Now crosses over the right hand, blows by Hicks, goes down the avenue, kicks it back to Wills. Wills, right corner for Schrock. Schrock, up at home in the post, goes back to Wills. Deja pitches it back to Schrock, right point, 10 on the shot clock. Now penetrates, pulls up, throws it off the side of the glass, no. And she stepped out of bounds, and Cassie not looking herself right now. Just a little off, she's flaming a little gingerly, and that also means Eastern now entering a field goal drought of nearing about four minutes. Hicks cut off in the corner by Wills and by Thomas. They'll have to send it back top side for Shepard. Shepard, left corner for Sam. Now Jenny Ryan, Jenny Ryan, right wing for Hicks. Hicks, who came in the leading score in this game, stuck on six points. Down low, stolen away. Wills slapped it away, Thomas with the ball, two on two. Thomas, Schrock, Schrock's gonna wheel it out. Smart play, no she's not, down to Reddit, left block, off the glass, no. And the rebound pulled out by Thompson. Quickly ahead to Hicks, all alone, lays it up, and in. Michigan's cut it to within three. Eastern Michigan wanted the foul on the left block on Reddit, they didn't get it. A lot of contact, could have called it. Crowd on their feet, it's Mays and Blue making noise. 4.15 to go, timeout Eastern Michigan. Well, James and Huntley will check in when we come back, and boy, does Eastern Michigan need them now. They're starting to bleed a little bit. 4.16 to go, 53-50. Eastern Michigan in the lead, but they once led in this ball game by 13. We're back to Ypsilanti after this. You're listening to Eastern Michigan Basketball. Pro Bowler Josh Cribs and a fat head have in common? Ain't nothing common about me. They're both big, bold, and can light up a room. Just like Josh, a fat head can change the look of everything in one big move, transforming any ordinary room into the ultimate fan cave. You ain't know, I'm a fat head. And with over a thousand fat heads, we've got you covered no matter what your favorite sport or team is. Go to fathead.com to order yours today. Come and get me, fathead.com. Back here at the EMU Convocation Center, Eagles 53, Michigan 50. That lead has dwindled from 13 down to three thanks to an 8-1 Michigan run. Chad? Tablin James out of the timeout. Going to get the pass from Kristen Thomas. They get right to the hole, waste no time, and put it through and push that Eagle lead back to five. That's why Eastern needed to get Tavlin in the game and called the quick timeout knowing you needed instant offense. Thompson, top side, Boylan left wing. Boylan trying to get it down low to... Sheffer, nothing home. Now they'll loop it down to Hicks, the right block. They looped it over her head. And out of bounds. It's going to stay with Michigan, tipped out by Eastern. And we're going to keep it right here. As uh, with under four minutes to go now, we got a scoring update, Greg Steiner, from the lovely land of Virginia. And uh, the winner of this game will take on Richmond or UNC Wilmington. Right oh, now, the suspense is killing me. Right now, with 8.44 to go in the second half, it's UNC Wilmington 43, Richmond 38, uh, 17 to 10 in the second half. The Seahawks have come out on fire after they trailed by two at the half. And a uh, quick run around. Other scores of interest right now out in normal Illinois, Redbird Arena, Illinois State 25 to 18 leaders over Central Michigan, 7.22 to play in that first half. Of course, last night, the University of Toledo came back to win against Delaware, 58-56. Of course, the Rockets will host uh, either Auburn or 
uh, excuse me, the winner of Auburn Tennessee Tech. And right now, the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech have a two point lead with about a minute and a half to go before the intermission. And the other back game going on, uh, Penn State and Duquesne. Oh yes, I forgot the Golden Flashes right now down 11, 50 to 39, second half action uh, out at the A.J. Palumbo Center in Pittsburgh. Uh, right now, Bob Lindsay's crew is gonna have to have a big second half output. They were down 34, 21 at the break. And we're all Mac fans, right? We all wanna see other Mac teams win and the, P the WNIT tournament and the NCAA tournament, right? Yeah, you figure on the men's side, uh, the MAC so far is five and one. Buffalo, nice. Western Michigan, Ohio, or excuse me, five and two. The only loser has been so far the Miami Redhawks going down at Rhode Island. Thompson right out of the break. It's the entry pass and jacks of a triple, and that's no good. So Thompson, a struggling night from downtown, just one of five, and she's one of nine overall. Tom. Kristen Thomas gets it right side, Talon James right wing. Cut off by Jenny Ryan the first time, but she wheels back and tries it again, goes back up. Knocked out of bounds though by Michigan. So Tavlin 0 for two on that trip. And with 10 seconds on the shot clock, they're gonna say, never touched rim. Okay, 3.29 to go. James gets the entry pass from Huntley. James against Ryan, throws it left side to Schrock and that ball's knocked out of bounds. And Cassie could hang on to it. She is really gimpy. And Amory Gilbert with a decision here. Do you leave in a gimpy Schrock? Or do you bring in a healthy Deja Wills who's played her tail off tonight? Hard to say. Deja certainly has the ability to make shots, but Cassie, you're glue that holds everything together. Thompson for three, no. Kristen Thomas comes in flying through the sky. Like Supergirl, she gets hacked in midair. Thompson with a foul. And that is just, thankfully, the fifth Michigan foul will not send Kristen Thomas to the free throw line. Schrock in backcourt, three minutes to go, Eastern up by five. The winner advances in the WNIT to the second round. James working against Ryan, left hand's left side, now top side for Huntley. Huntley backs it out, Eastern wants to run some clock. 2.52 to go in the game, 12 in the shot clock, now 10. Schrock top side. Working against Hicks, left hand dribble, wills her way between three defenders off the high glass and in. Well, I guess that shows us, huh? You keep Schrock in. Keep her in, you knew it was a matter of time. Schrock with five, Huntley with a steal. Working against Thompson, gonna dish it to James, gonna lay it up and in! Eastern Michigan explodes on a run. Seven points in a minute and a half, guys. Just what the doctor ordered for Eastern Michigan. That's what this offense can do, partner. It's a 30-second Kevin Borset timeout. We're gonna keep it right here. And how about Eastern Michigan going on their quick run, showing some energy and getting this crowd back on their feet. By the way, this crowd, well over a 1,000 people tonight. This place is jammed, there's energy all over, and it's not just maize and blue. It's been a long, long season, and Eastern has been able to find a lot of people through the turnstiles. You figure on the season, they've averaged uh, almost 500 and some a game. This is well doubling that tonight, but uh, fans here have seen some basketball action at quite its finest, but Eastern, quick turnaround, just when we thought the legs were starting to get tired, and they found their second, maybe third wind, and Michigan hasn't been able to find their uh, real go-to down the stretch. Right, maybe having James and Huntley on the bench for that long stretch really helped them. Get a little fresh. 2.15 to go, 17 on the shot clock, down low, off the block, Shepard lays it up off the glass and through. Well, she gets the home cook and bounce to go there, even though it's not her home court. And now backcourt, Schrock will face pressure. She'll back it out. Now Ryan will take her one-on-one. -on -one. Under two minutes to go to 59-52 Eastern Michigan lead. We know what opponents do when they score over 60 points against Michigan. They usually win. We'll see if that holds true tonight. James, left-hand dribble against Hicks. Beats her off the dribble. High screen by Schrock. Crosses over left hand to the lane. Short corner. Lays it up. No. Air ball. Reddit saves it back at the buzzer. Huntley again. Yes! She tripled, it was an identical play. Reddit saved it out of the air, threw it back to Huntley at the buzzer, and she filled it, Greg. Michigan just gave up on
on the play. They knew the shot clock violation was coming, so they laid back. Oh, Sheffer gets a shot to go from the left block, and Michigan chooses to foul Schrock in backcourt with the crowd still on their feet with a minute 19 to go. And so Cassie gets hacked, and that's only the sixth team foul. So now Amory Gilbert has a choice to make with substitutions with poor foul shooters. And looks like Michigan's going to want to foul, and they will. So they will foul James. Thank you very much. And so with an eight-point lead, Eastern Michigan feeling it right now. I don't know about you guys, but I've never been so sure that an off-balance one-handed three was going in. <laughs> Second time we've seen that tonight, and you just knew as soon as it left her, her fingertips that it was going down. Maybe that's her shot that we should be uh, looking for more often. <laughs> You're right. There's just no doubt. It's like this was identical of what just happened, and she got it off of the buzzer, and that was beautiful. By the way, Huntley in this ball game starting to own it. She now has 16. James hits both free throws. She has 20, a very quiet 20. Boylan quickly ahead to Hicks. Hicks might be her last game of her career, throws it out of bounds. Threw it out of bounds. A minute 12 to go, Eastern gets it back. They're up a cool 10 with a minute 12 to go. Start looking online, we're heading somewhere. And now Schrock with pressure in backcourt has to call a timeout. A minute 12 to go, 10 point Eastern Michigan lead over the University of Michigan. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Eastern Michigan Basketball. Convocation Center, 72 seconds separating Eastern Michigan from the first postseason tournament win in program history. They're up 10 points on the University of Michigan. Chad Bush and Greg Steiner ready to take us home. Thank you, Brian Nemirovsky. Minute 12 to go. Inbounds to Huntley. She schools everybody up court. A three-on-one developing. She'll wheel it out. Good senior move there, and she'll get hacked from behind. So Eastern Michigan's best free throw shooter is going to step to the stripe and shoot a one and one. That's the eighth Michigan team foul. That's the third on Veronica Hicks. Not who Michigan wants to see march the line. You mentioned Sydney and what she's done throughout her career and 71% free throw shooter. She sticks the first. Huntley, you compare her steals last year. She had 44, this year 82. And she misses the second end, but Reddit chases it down in the corner and knocked it out. Good hustle. Eastern Michigan will keep a 11-point lead with 103 to go here in the ball game. Michigan's got a hustle. Backcourt hustle by Boylan across the timeline. Now to Thompson. Thompson down on the post and a behind-the-back foul that Amory Gilbert absolutely won't even look at. She's so upset about it. Thomas, who's foul happy, went over the back and well, she's going to send Sheffer to the free throw line. Oh. Michigan still well below their average of uh, trips to that free throw line, though. Just now their ninth and tenth opportunities. A Wolverine team that usually gets there at a high rate per game. Sheffer splits the pair. Ball's loose in the corner, and it's going to go out of bounds. Michigan's going to keep it. So don't buy that ticket yet, Greg. 55 ticks left. And Michigan with their three-point potency. You can't sleep on them. Boylan in the paint. Puts it up. Got it to, oh, just rim off, thankfully. But another foul. And if you're Amory Gilbert, Greg, you got to call your team over and say, just don't foul. No foul. And now four fouls on Sidney Huntley. And two players that have had a lot of time to play have had back-to-back -back fouls knowing you can't continue to allow Michigan to stop the clock. Boylan hits the first. 65-56 Eastern Michigan over the University of Michigan. She shoots a jump shot from the free throw line, and I guess why not when you hit them both. Reddit gets it stolen. Backcourt Sheffer back to 
Boylan. Boylan tries to dish it down low. Shepard picks it up, lays it in. Here we go. 65-59. It's a six-point game. Kevin Borsef calls timeout. And the air starting to get deflated from this once energetic Eastern Michigan crowd. And it just, uh, man, oh, man, critical mistakes by a team with three seniors on the court, Greg. And you just hate to see this happen when you have teams by the throat. You just want to choke them and knock them out. Yeah, but the problem is it's still an Eastern team that if you grand scheme of things does not tournament tested down the stretch. Yes, they've done it in the MAC tournament, but this is a whole different ball game. You're still a Michigan team that made it to the national semifinals of this tournament just a year ago. And until that clock shows triple zeros, they're nothing ever set in stone. Yeah, and, and they took it, this Michigan team, you're right, they are tournament tested. They went to the WNIT last year, went all the way to the semifinals. I mean. You know, they did win four games in postseason last year. So, yeah, experience there certainly counts. Schrock, trouble triggering. We'll have to get it into James. James will get fouled in the backcourt. And so now it is just still a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Tablin James back to the free throw line. And these are two critical free throws, Greg, with just a six-point Eastern Michigan lead. Certainly is. And you figure it's been a 5-0 Michigan run. And Eastern... Uh, has taken the air out of the ball a lot, haven't had to shoot it, and last field goal, of course, 135, and that was that uh, Sydney three-pointer. Tablin hits the first. TJ now with 21 points in this ball game. She averages 17 and a half a game, misses the second. Thompson tapped it out, so we thought, I guess not. Reddit must have got a fingernail on it. So Michigan basketball, 42 ticks left. It's a 66-59 Eastern Michigan lead. Veronica Hicks in backcourt for the Maze of Blue. Left side, Boylan all alone for three. Rims off, no. And we're going to get a foul on Schrock as Hicks got great position. Or are we not? Or we're going to get a Hicks foul. Oh, how about that? So Hicks pushed off on Cassie, and now Cassie will get two because now it's a Wolverine double bonus opportunity. And so, Cassie to the stripe around the year. She is a 68% free throw shooter. And we've heard the stories. After uh, struggling from the free throw line, just five games ago, she locked herself in the gym before the MAC tournament, shot 300 free throws. Well, if you were about to be called a Teletubby by your dad, you'd uh, lock yourself in the room too and shoot a lot of free throws. I still don't understand that reference, but maybe it's a family thing. <laughs> I gotta ask Mr. Uh, Schrock about that. Eight point Eastern Michigan lead, three point desperation by Hicks, no. Ball bouncing around off the shoulders of two Eastern Michigan players, somehow ends up on the floor again, into the hands of James. They're gonna have to, oh, Tavlin kicked it out of bounds. Tavlin was just about to get fouled intentionally by Thompson, and she kicked it out of bounds. Unintentionally, of course. So, Michigan ball, Sheffer all alone from three. Back iron miss, no. Thomas with the board, get rid of it, she will. And with 10 seconds left, guess what? Michigan's not gonna foul. Eastern Michigan is gonna move on and win their first postseason game ever in program history. Down go the David Wolverines. The Goliath Eastern Michigan Eagles win it here tonight. 67 to 59, Eastern Michigan wins it. We'll be back with a head coach, Amory Gilbert, and a player, our player of the game after this. This is Eastern Michigan basketball. Eastern Michigan victorious tonight, 67 to 59. They win this ball game. After a once having a 13 point lead, they held off Michigan who closed it within five and a very happy and proud head coach Amory Gilbert joins us here in the post game. Coach, your thoughts, congratulations first off on this win over that big bad Michigan team. You got it done, you're advancing. 
Congratulations. You know, I'm so thrilled for this basketball team. I told them before the game that it's time for us to step up our lev level of competition and the quality of wins. We need to add some quality wins to our resume, and this is the first one. I am so proud of these young ladies, and what an effort here on our home floor. How does this rate amongst all the wins in your career here? The, it's biggest, the most postseason win in program history. It is the biggest win of our tenure. Temple is probably second. But we've got it from a lot of different places, and uh, kudos to the Eagles. Yeah. Our defense held again tonight. It sure did, Coach. Let's talk a little bit about your defense. They limit Michigan, a team that shoots 43% to just 39% from the floor, and a sharp shooting three-point team, third best in the Big Ten, just 19% there. So you got some things done defensively. You stayed in man-to-man. -man. What was the plan? You know, we knew they were bigger than us. It worried me early because they were going inside and they were getting whatever they wanted. But India Harrison came in came in and changed the game, got some key rebounds, got a few stops there. Uh, you know, Sydney Huntley Rogers, could you get any luckier? She is our Shamrock. <laughs> She's on the web page as Shamrock, and Shamrock wears number 13. Talk about the hustle of Paige Reddit in this ballgame to set up both of those miraculous three-pointers at the buzzer it just seemed that your team was hungrier tonight. That was sort of a microcosm of this game. Absolutely, they were a team that didn't quit and there really has just been no limit to what this team can do. I am so proud of them. No idea that this would, uh, the game would turn out this way. I knew we were capable, but I'm certainly proud. And Paige Reddy led the hustle charge. KT was a little flat tonight, Paige picked her up. Yeah, and you know what? You got some pieces from your bench to chip in tonight. Some pieces we haven't seen contribute as much. How about Deja Wills? Uh, how about Thomas Desiree style? Uh, talk about them off the bench, really chipping hey, in. Let me tell you something. That, that that tandem of Desiree Thomas and Deja Wills, Desiree Thomas comes in, hits a huge three on her first touch. Deja, Deja Wills hits a three, makes some great passes. How about Cassie Schrock with all those assists? I mean, just a, a stellar night for her. Didn't score as many points as we'd like to see her score, but she did some other things. She did. Let's talk about it. Cassie uh, in the first half had 11 assists. Uh, she ends up with 13. A little bit off offensively, but uh, she set other players up, Coach. She set them up nicely. Tavlin James uh, found her drive, uh, 21 points. Sydney Huntley Rogers, 17 points, four rebounds. I mean, Sydney Huntley, she got into the groove tonight. She guarded, she hit shots when we needed her to. What a great win for the Eagles. It's a great win. Last question, Coach. You Held know, them to 25 first half points. That was huge. That is huge. That's something that most teams haven't done in the Big Ten. Right. And again, it's a Michigan team that has beaten Ohio State, or yes. excuse me, the Ohio State University. The Ohio State. Don't forget twice. the, yes. <laughs> Coach, uh, here we go. Uh, we're going either to Richmond, uh, Virginia, or uh, we're headed to Wilmington, North Carolina. Now, uh, our, inter our internet just crapped out on us, but at the time, now UNC Wilmington was in, a, was in the lead with about six minutes left. Who would you rather play? Do you prefer to play either opponent? Well, let me tell you something. UNC Wilmington is going to be a tough game. Cynthia Cooper is a All-American, USA Basketball, Mrs. Basketball. She might have been married to John Wooden at one time. <laughs> I mean, her, the, her history is so long. However, let me just say that it's going to be a hard-fought game. Her team really guards the crap out of the ball. So we're going to have to execute a lot better than we did tonight to beat Wilmington. Well, wherever we're going, we know we're going on a plane. Let's have some fun, and let's keep this thing rolling. Absolutely. All right, thanks, we're Coach. Excited. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Amory Gilbert, the head coach, very proud head boss, and uh, we're going to have our player of the game uh, step up to the mic, and uh, it's the young lady out of Cincinnati, the, the senior who chipped in tonight, and it's uh, Sydney Huntley who came in 17 points on the night, four rebounds, and a couple of three-pointers tonight, Sydney, that uh, really – brought this crowd to their feet and really got momentum on your side. Talk about those two plays to start off. Well, you know, it's funny. My three hasn't been working all week long in practice, and I don't know. I just, Coach Tate kept telling me to uh, just be confident about shooting the three. I made them early in the year. Um, I didn't hit any in the conference tournament, you know, so it was really, you know, hard when we needed them in the Bowling Green game. And so Paige threw them out to me, you know, and off of her hustle, I just I just had to knock them down. Yeah, well, you did knock them down, but you've been making your mark all year, stealing the basketball. You're a player that had 44 steals last year. Last we checked, you've doubled that total. You're over 88. So. 
Talk about how that really f has fed your offense this year, getting steals on the defensive end. It does. Um, Coach Gilbert uh, stresses defense more so than she does offense. So uh, it gives me a lot of confidence, you know, when I know that I get a steal at half court, uh, I know that that's a layup right there at the other end, you know, when it's foot speed against foot speed, then I'm confident about that, you know, and uh, I just try to get steals, you know, and convert them to layups for myself or Tavlin or Cassie or the post. You're a senior. You're one of six seniors on this team, five that are active to play, and knowing that this could have been your final collegiate game of your career, is this something you, did you all get together and talk about this? Are you grasping the moment that this could be it and not wanting it to end yet? Yeah, uh, we played Michigan uh, throughout the summer in open gym, you know. So we already kind of had the, the feeling that, you know, that they thought that, well, they're a Big Ten team, you know. And they have a different kind of swagger than we do, you know, being in the Mid-American Conference. So we didn't actually get together as seniors, but we did say that we thought that our last home game had happened already, you know. So it was great to have uh, the promotion still like we uh, usually have. So it just kind of made us feel at home, which it did. We actually thought we were going to have to wear green because we thought we were hosting the tournament for Michigan. So uh, now that we got to wear white and be at home, we got all, our, all of our promotions in. Well, it just gave us a home feeling. Yeah, and you played like you deserve to be the home team tonight, mm -hmm. Sydney. And Congratulations, our player of the game. Uh, 17 points in this ball game, four rebounds, and four of nine from downtown, two of which were miraculous <laughs> at the buzzer heaves. Thank and, you. Uh, your game continues to impress us. Good luck in the next round against either Richmond or UNC Wilmington. Either yes. way, we know we're going somewhere warm, right? Yes, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. No problem. All right, Sydney Huntley joins us, the senior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And tonight, she uh, was the beneficiary of a couple of nice feeds from Paige Reddit, and she sinks two of her four three-pointers by a variety of desperation. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. We'll come back to the Convocation Center after this. You're listening to Eastern Michigan Basketball. Convocation Center, Eastern Michigan victorious tonight. They will advance in the WNIT tournament. They will do so thanks to a 67-59 win over the University of Michigan, and they got it done. Here's how it all went down. Tavlin James on 8 of 18 shooting from the floor. Really got her drive going tonight. She puts up 21 points uh, to lead three Eastern Michigan players in double figures. Sydney Huntley, who you just spoke to, you heard about her. 17 points, led the charge from downtown. Four of nine from deep Longland. And 10 points for Paige Reddit. She also grabbed eight boards. And, uh, of course, the hustle points that won't go on the stat sheet. A couple of balls that were dr trickling out of bounds that she saved, threw back to Huntley. Two identical plays, heaved up at the buzzer. Both assist went for three points apiece. Uh, Eastern Michigan also got some nice contributions out of Cassie Schrock from the assist standpoint. Just... Uh, uh, six points in the game for, for Cassie, a player that averages 14 and a half points a game, but 13 assists in the game, including 11 in the first half. And rebounding-wise, Eastern Michigan, uh, as we mentioned, Paige Reddit led the way with eight. Oh, excuse me, India Hairston, nine rebounds, leads the way. She also scored two. Other players checking in the scoring column, Kristen Thomas with two points, four rebounds. Uh, six points for Deja Wills off the bench. Very impressive performance and Desiree Thomas with a three from the corner. That was all the scoring for Eastern Michigan. In the ball game, they shoot 40% from the floor, 38% from three-point land, and they shoot 60% from the free throw line. Uh, University of Michigan, their season will end tonight, and it will end uh, the career of their uh, senior guard, Veronica Hicks. She'll finish the night with eight points in her career with eight points. The real story was uh, Rachel Shepard. She came into this ball game. Sheffer did 
uh, really averaging uh, just Sheffer averaged, uh, excuse me, 10 points a game. And she comes in and doubles her average. She puts up 20 points on 8 of 15 from the floor. The only other Wolverine in double figures was Courtney Boylan, the point guard. She put up 10, 12 rebounds for Jenny Ryan, the 5'9 guard, to lead the way. Uh, Michigan was limited in shooting to just 39% from the floor and 19% uh, from downtown, 4 of 21. And they shot 58% from the free throw line, 7 of 12. And this is a Michigan team, folks, that shoots 74% from the line during the season. So Eastern Michigan doing a lot of things as we welcome Greg Steiner back uh, to really throw the University of Michigan off. And the pressure that Michigan saw, you think, well, they're playing a MAC team. They've seen this kind of pressure in the Big Ten. Not so much. They weren't quite ready for the barrage Eastern brought against them. They gave it their all, though, but Eastern just... They offensively, they crashed the glass, 42 rebounds. They out-rebounded a Michigan team, but they allowed Michigan to get a, 10 more boards than their season average. So if that's something Coach Gilbert's looking at, that's something she's got to correct. But a still hold a Big Ten team under 40%. And outside, you couldn't ask for anything more out of your dynamic duo, Sydney Huntley, a bear, pair of three-pointers that'll go down in EMU history is just falling off balance. Tavlin James couldn't ask for anything more, and he really just, uh, this was an EMU ball club that they've heard so many times before that they're uh, undersized and really still have to work, and that nonetheless proved to be the difference. Their grittiness and just ability to go right at Michigan, and that's why they're a eight-point victor, and they send the leaders and best home for another season. Yeah, we sure do. Michigan had the lead in this ball game with five, excuse me, with 5.05 to go in the first half. It was a back and forth battle for much of the first half, but Eastern Michigan really had the lead for most of this ball game and in fact had a uh, six point halftime lead. And they saw that lead balloon all the way up to 13, the, the midway point of the second half. And Eastern though, with that real bulky 13 point lead, had it cut down at one point, Greg, to three points with about five minutes to go before Eastern went on a 10-0 run led by Huntley steals. And uh, really, by the way, Eastern Michigan, nine steals in this game, forcing a team that doesn't turn it over very often. And Eastern cashed in on points off of those turnovers. How about 14 fast break points for Eastern Michigan compared to just six for the Wolverines? That's something that you got to be proud of. Overall effort, you can never come say an Eastern team doesn't bring you effort and intensity every night and I think that was what just uh, surprised a Wolverine ball club that sometimes goes out there and they uh, are able to beat mid-major teams just on fear factor alone and Eastern has played enough open gyms and summer ball with these squads and they just said uh, we're gonna show you what we're made of and this is our house and that's all that what made the difference. Yeah and for Eastern Michigan this is their first postseason win in program history. They have never won a postseason game. So it's a it's a milestone moment for Amory Gilbert in this program uh, to beat Michigan here tonight. And uh, Amory Gilbert also has never beaten a Big Ten team in her tenure. She gets that monkey off her back. And uh, we saw him play competitive last year, Greg, against Purdue, a six point win in the WNIT. Well, they get a home game here. Uh, and, and we should be honest here too, the only reason they got a home game was because Chrysler Arena was being renovated. Yep, they Eastern got kind of the perfect storm and that's what allowed them to have here. If you're four miles or seven miles down the road, it could be a different ball game, but, but it's not. And that's why Eagles will move on and now instead they will head on the road as they uh, say they're Farewell to the convo this season as the NIT now moves uh, really strictly uh, on the bid basis, and that's how home games are decided. And Chad, you have an update on what the plans are now for this EMU ball club. I do indeed. Uh, the WNIT representative, his name is? Duffy Burns, the former head coach at Cleveland State. Okay, thank you. Duffy Burns has just uh, broken the news that UNC Wilmington has won. So UNC Wilmington has beat Richmond. 63 to 54 and so that means Eastern Michigan will play UNC Wilmington in Wilmington North Carolina now the question was are they gonna play on Sunday or are they gonna play on Monday the answer is Monday it'll be a Monday night game in North Carolina Wilmington North Carolina so 
that is when we will carry this broadcast. We don't know the time yet. Uh, we would assume it would be 7 o'clock, but we don't want to lock that in yet. So we'll leave the time up for uh, guess, uh, perhaps 7, perhaps 7.30, perhaps even 8 o'clock. I couldn't imagine it being anything outside of that time frame. But that's what's going to happen. It's going to be the University of North Carolina Wilmington, a team that was ranked 15th in the CBI poll. That's the mid-major poll that comes out. Of course, you have your top 25 nationally ranked teams, and then you have your mid-major poll. So they were ranked 15th in the mid-majors. Uh, so we know it's a potent Seahawk team. Uh, so that's the story. Eastern Michigan will go on the road Monday night and will play their second round battle against the University of North Carolina Wilmington, and they earned that right tonight by beating the Michigan Wolverines 67 to 59. And that's going to do it for us. Some folks to thank before we uh, get out of Ypsilanti on St. Patrick's Day. By the way, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Forgot to mention all that if you celebrate it. Uh, folks to thank. want to thank Brian Nemirovsky, who stepped in tonight for Jeff Fulton. Did a whale of a job. Nemo, no stranger to the mic. Knew he'd do great. Sta stepped in as the executive producer. want to thank him. want to thank Greg Steiner, color commentator. want to thank Chelsea Acho, our assistant producer tonight. Uh, our studio engineer, 